Hello, welcome to a new yoga sequence working with upper spine mobility. We're going to begin this sequence in seated. So finding a nice comfortable position that you can spend a few minutes in seated in. Now that could be cross-legged and we're going to be working with twists to increase our upper spinal mobility and it's important in a twist that the spine is well aligned and that includes right through the base of the spine between the tailbone and the sacrum so it could be that you'd feel more comfortable just hopping up onto a block or a cushion or something to give you a little bit of elevation so that your thighs can release down and the lower spine can lift up but equally the legs don't need to be crossed they can be extended knees can always be bent if that feels easier and again you can be sitting on a block or some kind of support or not just as as you prefer so having grounded the base of the spine the tailbone and getting the sitting bones to release towards the mat let's spend a moment or two to just imagine the tailbone growing heavier breathing out allowing the weight of the tailbone to sink towards the mat or towards your cushion or block beneath you and at the same time especially with the inhalation seeing if it's possible to imagine the crown of the head soaring towards the sky above you and in between the spaces opening up and releasing through the spine and we're going to continue to open and lengthen the spine and also to have awareness of the breath with the Parvatasana seated mountain. So on the inhalations, allowing the spine to lift and lengthen all the way through to the crown and the arms circling upwards. And then with the exhalation, keeping the spine really tall and allowing the arms to come down. And a lot of the secret of releasing the height through the spine here is that as the arms come past, just past the spine just the moment before the arms would pass each vertebra you're releasing that vertebra away from the one below and with the inhalation as well diving down really using the space that the breath can create in the body between your ribs to help you extend especially through the upper spine and the upper body so if i do it with the breath in, in rather than talking And then perhaps it's more visible and the neck and the head can a little bit tilt through to follow the position of the hands but again letting the neck lengthen upwards and backwards rather than jamming backwards so a last round of the breath here in the seated mountain And this time as we're breathing out we're just going to allow the hands to pass through to namaste at the heart center and the spine still nice and tall and long and then from here we're just going to work into a little bit of a spinal twist so our pelvis is grounded on the mat on the earth or on the, the block we're going to aim to keep the base of the spine in position and the waist nice and tall and just as we breathe in we're working a spiraling action through our upper spine, through the spine in the rib cage, and the arm flows with us. And then again, we can breathe out, come back to Namaste. So the idea is to again really keep the base of the spine grounded, the waist nice and tall and upright, and the movement flowing now through the rib cage, through the shoulder and eventually into the arms. Now there's a tendency when people work twists that they leave with the arm and the spine gets locked. And really if the arm goes too far, the spine too quickly before the spine has had a chance to rotate, it will lock the spine around the base of the rib cage. But we're hoping to open and mobilize the spine all through the rib cage. So again, just keep that brain to hand connection a little bit quiet. So the brain can arrive in the spine and the spine has a chance to spiral. And then once again, we're going to breathe out back to Namaste. So let's just flow this through one more round to each side.
And then we're going to let the hands release. You're going to, if you're in the kneeling, if you're in the cross-legged, then hands can come onto the knees for this next one. And if not, um, and the legs are in a V, uh, I'll demonstrate that in a second as well. What's the best way to try and work with that, with flowing the spine? So we're going to think about a cat stretch here in the seated. So tailbone again draws down and a little bit forwards. And we need to use our banda, so those powerful scoop and hollowing actions in the lower abdomen and all through the waist, rolling in. That's on the exhalation. And then breathing in, we draw back up all the way through to the crown. Again, we keep the waist tall and we're just looking for that reach through the upper spine, up and out behind the breastbone into the crown. So not too much arc, virtually none at all at the waist. And then again, breathing out to imagine a piece of string pulling the tailbone forwards and the waist grows up and over and the breastbone hugs towards the spine and you go up and over. So you're working against gravity as you round into the position. And then again, breathing in to grow tall, keep the waist lengthening upwards, sides of the ribs lengthening upwards and the spine opens up behind the breastbone, collarbones are still open, and the shoulder blades sink down the back. So that's the movement here if you're in cross-legged, and you can get a little bit of purchase through the knees to help you with that movement of the spine. And if the legs have gone wider like this, it's harder to get that action or purchase from the legs, very much so. So what I would recommend instead is just keeping the lower back really tall, use your waist strength and your abdominal strength, walk the fingertips forwards, you keep lifting the abdominal wall up and in behind your spine. And then as you're ready again, you walk back and getting that lift up and through. And again, if the lower back won't stay tall, just let the knees soften a little there you roll forwards, still keep that lift through the waist, rolling in, nice stretch in the upper back, and then roll back up and lifting up and in. So as we come out of this, this roll, we're going to stay tall again, and we're all going to think about uncrossing our legs, and then we can let the left leg extend and the right leg we can tuck in and towards us and once again ideally we're going to have that sense of lift here through the base of the spine and let's hug the leg towards us but as ever i always think it's so much safer and so much more mobilizing for the spine to come into the twist using the back and abdominal muscle and then once you're here hugging the leg to really anchor yourself in the position and the rear arm behind. Now sometimes when we've hopped up onto something, the rear arm is a little bit high and it can't touch the floor and that, that can feel a, a little bit uh, disconnected, I think. Um, so you can always put another support in underneath the hand if you're too high to touch the floor, just so you get some contact behind you there. With these, again, the idea is to really broaden out across the chest. So letting the collarbones widen away from the top of the breastbone and the ribs widen away from either side of the breastbone. But also the sense of the ribs widening away from the spine and the upper back and the shoulder blades moving down the back. So the work for the spinal twist is coming from the core muscles, which pull in towards the spine and give it support, but the shoulders and the ribs can still stay really quite open. And as I breathe in, I lengthen. And as I breathe out a little bit, I work into that twist. And as I breathe in, I lengthen right from the base of my spine into the crown. And as I breathe out, I twist a little bit. And then if I let go, I'm more or less here without the arm strength. So I haven't been pulling myself in using the arms too much and then unspiraling and this leg can release out to the side and it might not be comfortable there it might need to go a little bit further away and let's just hinge forward to let the spine align we can reach up and out through the waist up and out into the crown up and out the sitting bones can reach down and back 
to the spine again, lengthening upwards and downing. Just two or three breaths here, relaxing a little bit through the back of this extended neck. But as well, additionally, really thinking about lengthening the spine following that twist. And then on an inhalation, coming back up. So let's work that through to the other side as well. So this time the right leg is extended and we're going to hug the left leg in and get the spine to lift up really tall behind that leg as we give it a quick hug in. And then ideally, if we can, we use our core strength to bring us into this spinal twist. So keep as much length as we can going through the spine and the arms are as passive as possible all the way in and through. And then once we're there, we can hug onto the leg to anchor us in position. And then the breath is really helpful. As we breathe in, just as we did in the Parvatasana, the seated mountain, and we created lots of length through the spine on our inhalations. Crown aligned with the tailbone. Then as we're ready, on the exhalation, we might just be able to drift a little bit into the space through the spine that we created on the inhalations. So once again, breathing in, I'm lifting right from the base of my spine all the way through to the crown of my head. And then breathing out, I use my waist strength, muscles around my rib cage, just to bring me into a gentle twist. And the emphasis again, lots of space across the front of the chest back of the chest as well, and the shoulders sinking away from the ears. So last breath here, nice and tall. And then as you're ready, let's with an exhalation unspiral, we can release this leg to the side, further away, closer, whatever feels comfortable, block underneath or no block underneath. And then again, this, this hinging forwards, this idea of stretching the spine. So the sitting bones really reach back and the upper waist and the ribs reach up and down. And in that way, the spine gets a good stretch and we feel the back of the leg beginning to open. Let it soften, remembering to breathe. Aiming to lead really with the spine more than with the hands. That's neither here nor there. It's that length through the spine, the spine opening, the axis of the body carrying us in. So again, with an inhalation, we're going to breathe up, come away from that, and you can release this leg and just let the legs roll inwards and outwards a couple of times. So from here, let's draw ourselves around, we're going to come through towards the all fours position, and flowing the cat stretch just a little bit here in the all fours, that traditional way. So as usual, I always think it's helpful just to get lots of space between the knees and the wrists so we can stretch back initially and then breathing in, coming forwards. And we really need the space between the hat, knees and the wrists that's the spine when it's nice and stretched between the tailbone and just to the base of the neck. And then we'll have lots of room to roll our spines here. And let's go with an exhalation to round the spine, downward facing cat. And then an inhalation to send the tailbone back, to open the sides of the waist forwards, the sides of the ribs forwards, the spine stretching in the middle. And we lengthen on through into the crown of the head so much that we begin to look upwards. So it's that tailbone moving downwards, lifting in the muscles directly in front of the tailbone, in the lower abdomen, navel draws to the spine, and we can really hug the breastbone back to the spine out there. And then as we're breathing in, keep the abdominal muscles lifted in the lower abdomen, navel drawing to the spine, keep the breastbone hugging up towards your spine. Collarbones open again, broad through the shoulders, front and back, and the neck can lengthen up then, out of the spine in the back of the rib cage. So it's our exhalation to roll in and then our inhalation to unfurl, to roll out and a little bit up. 
Now, if you're feeling quite strong, you might begin to roll additionally in this way. That is, you round the spine, you also send the hips back towards the heels. And as you breathe in, really check that the lower abdomen stays lifted and the navel pulls to the spine. The elbows tuck in and they direct back towards your knees. And you're breathing in, reaching forwards and outwards again, upwards, and then the deep lift in the abdominal muscles flows you into your downward cat once more. And additionally, as you really breathe out, hips move back to the heels. Breathing in, the elbows are tucked in and back. This little crouching cat position. As you breathe in, you're moving forwards, outwards and upwards. As you keep the elbows pinning back, what it means is that you're in your triceps muscles and the muscles of the upper back. And this enables you to really open your chest. If you're working the position and the elbows go out, unfortunately, as you're coming forward, you've got the biceps and the chest muscles at the front of the body working. So it's very hard to move out and up. So really just to keep your technique going, pin the elbows back and then you'll be able to flow the spine so much more readily and that usually is what it's all about. Now from here on one of these instead of flowing into the, the cat per se if you wanted to you're going to just breathe in and flow all the way forwards along the length of the mouth and then amazingly you'll be in cobra. And if it doesn't work diving through, just send the hips to the heels and gently walk forwards on the forearms until you're extended on the mat as I am. So we'll just let the legs lengthen back in line with the sitting bones and sinking back to that strength we had in the lower abdomen and the navel drawing to the spine and the breastbone hugging to the spine. And then here, let's say with an inhalation, we're going to lengthen forwards and outwards. So the movement really moves towards the crown. We're opening the spine behind the breastbone, lengthening it. And the movement coming from the back strength, from the core strength. And you breathe out here, let's say. We're going to breathe in here. And breathe out to roll back down. So very similarly to what I was saying in the twists, when you really get the strength to come in towards your spine in the back of your waist, the sides of your waist, the front of your waist, around the ribcage and opening up behind the breastbone, collarbones really wide, same thing again that you can open the chest when the work is in the upper back and the back of the arms. But really still in many ways it's in the back and the core and rolling back down. And we're going to come up once more and on this one as we come up really check that you've got lots of strength around the spine because we're going to see if we stay here this time and mobilize the spine a little bit. So an out breath here and breathing in. And then as you're ready, and if you're ready, a little bit we're going to breathe out to look back along the length of the body, breathing in to come center. So now check that this is really comfortable. It's a long reaching action through the ribs towards the crown. And then eventually you look back. So we're avoiding a simple look back. <laughs> but instead, it's a long scenic route looking all around the space where you are. And then eventually your gaze might arrive at your heel and breathing, breathing in to come back. And I'm working it in this long way so that we're, we're aiming to mobilize the upper spine. You know, like that. And after a few, you know, it does get tiring and it's time just to breathe out and roll the spine back through to the floor. Let the heels release out towards the sides. And we just gently rock the hips side to side to let go and really softening in the shoulders, relaxing there. So breathing and allowing our exhalation to really lengthen. And then as you're ready from here, we can roll the legs back in and towards each other. We can engage the abdominal muscles nice and strongly. 
lifting up and away from that position is send the hips back in towards the heels, really stretching out the lower back. And we shouldn't feel any strain or pinching in the lower back during that cobra practice. If you do, you've lifted a little bit too high and it would be better to lower down and lift up again with more strength around the midsection. But, but even then, um, even if there is no discomfort at all during the cobra, the bujangasana, it's usually nice just to stretch back and release the lower spine. So we be here just two or three breaths, allowing the body to continue to relax and the spine just to really lengthen there. So then, as you're ready again, let's think about drawing through towards an all fours position. Once again, shoulder blades, the energy in the shoulder blades moving down the back and lots of breath in the front of the chest. Just going to release the right hand and reach back to hold on to the left thigh and then draw that right shoulder back, lengthening the spine, tailbone to crown. Just be the breathing here, really open the length of the neck from between the shoulder blades into the crown. Keep breathing. Should be a reasonably good stretch across the outside of the neck, outside of the shoulder, upper back. And then let's go, letting go on that side. Once again, just breathe in and breathe out to reach back, making sure your abdominal muscles are strong, other side. And draw back through the shoulder, aiming to square up through the shoulders and the rib cage. Deep lift in the lower abdomen again, lengthening the spine, tailbone to crown. Lots of lift lower abdomen, and really releasing the spine in the upper back, into the neck, into the crown. So breathing, and then as you're ready, exhalation, releasing, and we're back here. And from the all fours this time, we're going to think about tucking the toes under, energy in the shoulder blades moving back, front of the chest open, and this strength pulling up through our triceps again, so that as we move back towards Adhamukhasanasana, again, the front of the chest is really open. We can lengthen the spine back behind the breastbone. We can open the sides of the ribs, sides of the waist, right back into the sitting bone. So you reach up and back. Weight lifting away from your shoulder joints as you pull the shoulder blades up the back, draw up through the kneecaps, lift powerfully in the lower abdomen and let the heels come down. So now here, because we didn't stretch the backs of the legs much, we might feel like letting the feet walk a little bit. We can raise the heel on the right side, press down and stretch into the left side and then reversing. A few times you press down, see if you can really lengthen from the inside of your hip joint to the inside of your heel. But keep the kneecap pulling up and the muscles on the inside of the kneecap pulling up. And then just gradually there we let that even up and the knees might not be extended fully. They might be a little bit bent, still keep drawing up through the kneecaps, fronts of the thighs. So then here we might need to just a little bit adjust in the shoulders so we've got the balance right. If you feel strong enough, keep drawing up through the triceps on your right side. We can reach back with our left hand, take hold of our left ankle or lower leg. We draw that left shoulder back again and we breathe here. Keep drawing up through the outside of the right side of the arm and the ribs and the waist into that right sitting bone. So you keep long through the spine. Get a twist in the upper back, but not the lower back. And then again, as you're ready, you can breathe in, breathe out. Replace that hand to the mat. Now check your strength, pull up powerfully in the outside of your left arm, left shoulder, left side of the rib cage working before you reach the right arm back. Keep the knees lifting, muscles on the fronts of the thighs working, your abdominal muscles are strong, breastbone hugs to the spine. And your right hand takes hold of the left leg and then you draw back through your right shoulder. And again, you keep reaching this left hip bone up, so the small of the back stays really long and the twist is through your upper spine. So we breathe and then once again, breathe out. We're going to release that hand, just check in with our long spine again, breathing and then out breath. Let's come down and soften all the way back, full child. Letting the head be supported in the child and if it isn't, popping something in underneath the forehead so that the head and neck can truly relax here.
spending a few moments to really absorb the support that the earth gives you. Allowing the whole spine to relax, but especially across the upper back, neck and shoulders. Simply breathing and being. And then again, with an inhalation, rolling up through the spine, we let the navel draw to the spine. The lower abdomen draws in and back. And roll up behind the breastbone all the way through to the crown. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this short video mobilizing the upper body and the upper spine. There'll be a second stronger video to follow if you feel like progressing to that where we'll work with Warrior 2 and Revolved Warrior 2 as well. Namaste.